The following is an American Military University presentation. Hi, I'm Robin Adney. Today I have with me James Bowden, a graduate student in the history program at American Military University. Thanks so much for being here, James. Thank you. It's great to be here. So in today's podcast, we're going to be discussing the segregated economy of Kuwait. But to start things off, tell us a little bit about your background. As you said, I'm an AMU graduate, uh, graduated with a master's in ancient and classical history. And I have made the study of the Middle East, both in its ancient and more contemporary form. It's my primary research objective and goals. And currently, I'm about to take up the teaching post in Shanghai, China, dealing with AP world history. Great. So for our first question, what types of economic challenges is Kuwait facing at this time? Well, there are really two economic challenges that Kuwait is facing. One, they are having to decide how they are going to address the post-oil economy. How are they going to sustain themselves after the oil runs out? And that is a long-term problem that they are seeking to address, possibly within the medical area. But the biggest and most underlying challenge even to that is the challenge of integrating Native Kuwaitis into that post-oil economy. They highly segregate their economy to where there is no possibility of foreign workers being able to merge into white-collar jobs, and vice versa, there are no native Kuwaitis who understand the basics of the blue-collar job aspects of their economy. And so they're going to face a tremendous challenge in addressing how to get native Kuwaitis into those lower echelon type of jobs once the oil dries up, and then once the foreign worker base dissolves after that. And so you mentioned their economy being so highly segregated. You know, how is that affecting Kuwait? From Kuwait's very inception, Kuwait has had its economy divided between different tribes and even families within those tribes. Kuwait is very traditional in the fact that its economy has been dominated usually by one staple economic driver. And during the Perlene period, the economy was segregated between the two main tribes that make up the Kuwaiti native population. And even within this division of tribes and their work, the individual families would also be responsible for different job tasks within that area. So, for example, one tribe would be in control of all of the pearl farming and culturing processes, and within that, it would be segregated between certain families. I mean, certain families would be in charge of just driving the boats, and other family units would be in charge of diving for the pearls, and then other family members would be in charge of taking those pearls that have been collected and taking them to the market. And at this point, they would be handed over to the members or to the head of the opposite tribe, and the opposite tribe would then control, again, through the various families, the product to market aspect of the economic system where they would be in charge of getting it sold, getting it to the various markets within Kuwait and also to the traders outside. So Kuwait has had a long history of segregating their economy. And what was interesting was the transition during the oiling period happened fairly rapidly, but also the system had to adjust and there was a long-term consequence to this and there were many adjustments to the Kuwaiti constitution, and in that situation, the native Kuwaitis were moved into having the white-collar aspects of jobs, while foreign workers were heavily invested and called in for to take over the oil production of their system. So Kuwait has always had 
this type of operational structure, but it has not 